Wow, that's pretty good. If you would, come on in and grab a seat. Or, well, before you grab a seat, stand to your feet. And uh, let's listen to the uh, scripture that this young man has picked out for us this evening. Tonight's scripture comes from Matthew 3 and 11, and it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. All right. Yes, sir. All right, if you would, you can have a seat for just a moment. I, I've got a few announcements to make. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I heard something over here, and I, I, I had to look over there. She's, I think she was standing up when she said that. I'm just kidding. Um, how many of you know that we got the Daniel Fast going on? I only see a few hands. This front row does. Do y'all not know that we got a fast going on until Friday? Yeah. Uh, from the 11th to the 15th, church will be open nightly. We, we had it going on tonight from 5.30 to 6.30. But from here on, uh, tomorrow night and the next night from 6 until 7, uh, come on down and uh, pray with us. Uh, the church will be open uh, we get here about uh, 10, 15, and some of us get here about 30 minutes till. Ain't that right, sis? We get here pretty early, and we open up the doors. Come on in and, and just grab your seat and enjoy in, in some prayer to, to the Lord. Uh, it, it is something that we do every single year, and, and it is a great blessing. And if you don't get something out of it, something's wrong somewhere. It, it, is, it is a wonderful thing, and it is... A time this year that everyone should just come in and immerse yourself in prayer because we do need it in this country. Amen. Men's ministry, January 21st at 6 p.m. Um, you can go onto the church center app and register uh, to come in. Uh, Roger, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, everybody knows that we're living in the last days, and, and if you're interested in what's going to happen when the Lord comes back. We're, we're in Revelation, studying Revelation. So if you're interested in knowing something about what's going to happen, uh, join us. And we'd be glad to have you. Amen. Amen. Um, Super Bowl, not as in the, the football thing, but soup as in something good to eat. We have a, a, a Super Bowl friends and family night, December the 31st. I heard that there were some prizes and, and things being given away, and we're going to be judging the soup that's going to be uh, ate that night. I asked. I've been begging and pleading, and I think they're finally going to let me judge. It, Pastor Phillips shaking his head. I, hey, look, I, I'm holding the mic. I think that they're going to let me judge. But anyway, we're going to be judging the soups, and uh, I'm, I'm going to stand in the front of the line and not let anybody have it until they let me judge the soups that night. Also, how many of you got cold feet right now? Anybody got cold feet? Your feet's cold? Homeless people, they got some cold feet. And I believe we got somebody, Sister Deborah, ain't you uh, Misty? Is that you? Come up here and tell some folks about that. That She's coming. Well, first of all, I want to say praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody. And I thank everybody for all the socks that's already back there, um, for bringing those in and then giving us money. And we've bought a couple packs of socks with that. Um, the event's on January the 30th. Um, if you want to come and help, Try to be there about between 10.30 and 10.45 because we'll set the tables out and get everything ready. But um, most of all, pray for somebody who will get saved, Amen. healed, or delivered. That's really on our hearts, heavy. That's why we're doing it, uh, to show God's love. But if you guys want to, just bring some socks in. There's a container back there. Thank you. Amen. And you said you had something for us? Don't beat me up because I picked on you. I'm going to. 
Brother Philip told me to come stand behind you. Nobody would see me. Um, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit of something about that's been on my heart that um, me and Miss Whitney and Miss Beverly are going to start doing. And I sent out a message to the parents today on the Church Center app. Um, but the Lord's really been dealing with me about our kids in our community that don't have food. We, I know, and it's it. I've known it, and it's like something that we know, but it, it, we're kind of, we stay in our bubble. If it don't affect us, we don't want to be bothered with it. And I know I'm not the only person that does that, but we all have a, an ability or a potential of doing that sometimes. But the Lord's really been dealing with me, especially since this, um, the schools has been on homebound and they're doing the thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of kids in our community that if they're not at school, they don't eat. They don't have food. And that breaks my heart. So we are going to start... Um, don't we're, we're going to start taking donations um, for food items and stuff. Like we're going to start at Talbot Elementary, and um, right now they send a bag home with some kids on Fridays. And of course, she said that most of the time, by the time they get home, they've already ate it, or they give it away because that's what they do. Um, if they see somebody else in need, then they just give it away. So we want to start taking up. If we can take up enough to take it to the schools, then they can send it back home with them through the middle of the week. And so then they'll have that food too. And we're talking items like things that they can cook themselves, um, little macaroni packs or the, the kind you put in the microwave, the little beefaronis and ma uh, spaghetti and meatballs that you can put in the um, their cereal bars, um, cheese and crackers, you know, things of that nature that little kids can just take in a sack and take home, little juice box, um, or we figured out that it'd be about $7 per kid. And um, so if we could, I'm asking for your help. Our kids are going to be help bagging them, and then we'll take them to the school. Um, you know, we can't sit back and do anything anymore. We've got to help our kids. We've got to reach out and touch them. And so we're going to set up a, um, a thing on the kiosk and on the church center app. If you would rather donate or you can give the money to me or Miss Whitney or Miss Beverly, or you can put it in an envelope and Shelly will make sure it gets to the right person. And I promise every dollar will go to feed these kids. And I would love to see us be able to reach out to other schools and not just that and um, just be praying for an opportunity for us to be able to help during the summer too because those same kids still don't have food and so if you guys would just help us and just be praying about it for us and just um just whatever you guys can do is good with us and i appreciate it and thank you guys and i love y'all thank you sis You know, growing up, uh, I know a lot of you is a lot younger than me, and I'm, I'm a little bit younger than most, but whenever you, uh, you grow up and you don't have a whole lot, beans and taters and cornbread is all we had sometimes. And what Sissy is talking about is just a little drop in a bucket to feeding a kid for just a little while. And, uh, you know, Brother Philip and Brother T.H. and I talk all the time about things that we had as we was growing up. And if we can give just pennies a day to, to help some of our local kids, that's something that we can uh, pour into the storehouse. It's not very much. Sissy, I applaud you for what you're doing. We really appreciate it. Any other announcements before we move move on? Did it, did I miss anything? Uh, we're going to take up some uh, prayer requests, and, and I've got some that I, I want to uh, uh, to ask for. First of all, uh, I got some family up in uh, some sorry uh, up in Louisville. My little grandbaby just a little over uh, two is having surgery tomorrow and uh, just her her name is kind of special Ione 
and uh, she's having surgery on her ears tomorrow. So if you would remember her, uh, just really need a special prayer. A lot of infection, and, and if you got uh, infection in your ears, it's kind of dangerous. So if you would, just remember her in your prayers. Um, Helen Welch, uh, Tim's mom, is in the hospital. Uh, she's not doing too good. Uh, we need to lift up uh, her and remember Tim. Um, as much as them two fight, you wouldn't think that he cared much about her, but he, he's, a, he's a loving son, and, and we need to lift up the Welch family. Uh, Helen's a special, special lady. Uh, the family of uh, Eric Johnson. Um, uh, Eric... Uh, The family of uh, Johnny Green, he passed away this morning. And uh, we need to remember him also in, in our prayers and his family. And uh, with that being said, we'll start over here on this side. Uh, anybody got prayer requests over here? I know, know you got some, Sissy, with your family. Okay, your uncle. Anybody else? I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> yes, sir. It's got lost loved ones that we need to pray for. Anybody else on this side? Yes, sir. Tiffany? Yes, sir. Anybody else over here? Yes, sir. Anybody in the center here? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. Anybody else in the center here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's remember this. Anybody else in the center here? Anybody on this side? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How many of us needs to grow spiritually? Oh, hallelujah. Anybody else on this side? How many of us have somebody that's been touched by COVID? Yes, sir. Oh, I, I'm, I'm about to get to you. Hang on one second. How many of us is, is praying every single night that this is, this is the last night that we pray to get this COVID out of our lives? Fervent prayers is, is, is what the Bible asks us for, correct? Let's not, not give up. We need to keep going and going and going. We cannot give up. We got to keep praying and, and, and not give up because God does not give up on us. Amen. On the stage, don't, not yet, brother. <laughs> Sissy, you got anything? Brother? Give us an update, please. Um, we've been uh, asking the church to pray for my brother-in-law, Clint. Um, 
because he does have COVID. Um, unfortunately, he has um, had to be placed on a ventilator. Um, and we we were actually kind of celebrating, you know, not too long ago, we thought that he was going to get to come home. And then he had a an episode that happened. So they didn't have a choice but to put him on a ventilator. As of, you know, as of yesterday, um, the ventilator is doing 100% of the breathing. We were told that they were going to look at transferring him to Nashville, uh, to Centennial Hospital, uh, where they were going to actually put him on a different type of a machine that would actually circulate his blood in and out of his body and oxygenate it. But um, when they were trying to arrange the arrangements with Centennial, Centennial found out that he is 55 years old and has decided that because he's 55 years old, that's too old for them to deal with. And so pretty much so we have just been told that, you know, we'll keep you on the ventilator as long as what we can, but, you know, there's nothing else we can do at this point. So please be praying um, that, you know, we really need a miracle at this point in time uh, in order for our brother-in-law to come home. Uh, please be praying for my sister Melody because she is just, she is just distraught over this as all of us are. So we would really, really, really appreciate your prayers. Like I said, his name is Clint. Amen. How many of you know that they don't have any control over what's going to happen here? How many of you know that God is in control? If you would, stand to your feet. We're going to show them that God is in control. We're going to give him a hand clap of praise that lets them know that God, Jesus Christ, through the blood of the Lamb, that we know that the healing can come. We know that the healing can come through the price that he paid on Calvary. That we know without a doubt that through the price that God, through the Son, the Holy Christ, there is no way that the doctors can say that he is not going to make it. There is no way that he is going to die in that bed without Jesus Christ being the one that's going to say you're dead because he's going to live on amen how many is going to say that give him some praise doctors don't tell you when you're going to die there's only one there's only one look to your neighbor and say there's only one Look to your neighbor and say, there's only one. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you're doing for us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for looking after us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for our praise team. We thank you for looking after each and every single sick person that's out there, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you do for us daily, dear Heavenly Father. Look after our country, dear Heavenly Father. Look after each and every single person that's got a prayer request, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you to lift them up. Touch each and every single one of them, dear Heavenly Father. We ask for the miracle, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you to touch them, dear Heavenly Father. Lift them up out of these beds, dear Heavenly Father. Wipe this virus out of this country, dear Heavenly Father, out of this world. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for guidance. We ask you for each and every single person, dear Heavenly Father, to come closer to you. We ask you to open these churches up, dear Heavenly Father. Bring the people out of the streets, dear Heavenly Father. Guide them, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear, oh dear Heavenly Father, we ask you, sin, sin to be gone, dear Heavenly Father. Guide these people into your home, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you through your sons, Jesus Christ, Amen and amen. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood Then I repented of my sins 
Lord a praise tonight. Oh, come on now. Somebody give the Lord a praise. How many's got the victory? How many know you're on your way to heaven tonight? The Bible said, clap your hands, all you people, and give a shout of victory. Amen. Oh, somebody's got the victory. I ought to give him a shout tonight. Somebody knows they're on their way to glory. No matter what happens in this world, you're on your way to a better place tonight. My Hey, I, I like this phrase. I, I don't remember if I borrowed it or got it or what happened. But y'all look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a victor. I'm an overcomer. And I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a victor. I'm an overcomer. And I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Now you ought to tell the devil. You got to get loud for this because make sure he hears you tell him, say, I'm a victor. I'm an overcomer, and I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Now give Jesus praise for what he's given us tonight. Hey, you're a victor over COVID. You're a victor over diabetes. You're a victor over cancer. You're a victor over sexual immoralities and impurities. You're a victor over drugs, alcohol, tobacco, anything that the devil throws at you. Jesus said, I've given you all power. My, 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 let them mess your life up on it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's get our tithes. Let's get our offerings ready. We're going to receive them tonight. And, you know, we use a lot of scriptures to, to encourage you to give. And, and one thing I've learned about giving, and it keeps coming back to me, it's really a heart issue. Because if you love something, you'll give to it. Come on. How many remember, some of you are still dating, but you remember when you were dating that you didn't care what you spent? Come on. You bought her the flowers, and you bought her the candy, and you, and you, and you took her to the restaurants, and you didn't care because there was a love there. Amen? Even with children, you, 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 you give to them because you love them. You buy them the, I don't know what they got. Do they, they have Nintendo still? Somebody help me. They got switches, and the switches we had was off on the tree somewhere. But they, am I right? Is it a switch? Some of the young people help me. I'm, I'm confused. Thank you. Uh, we, don't have, we didn't have all that stuff. We had three stations and uh, <laughs> don't TV if we were lucky. But <laughs> you buy that stuff because you love them. Amen? If you got grandchildren, we buy stuff. We don't even know what it is. We just buy it because they like it because I'm so far removed. I don't know what all half that stuff is. But we do all that because we love them. And the Bible says where your heart is, where your love is, there's your treasure. Or where your treasure is, there'll be your heart. Amen. So when you give, what you're saying to God is, is I really love you. It's a heart thing. So that's why we encourage you to give because the, the more you love, it seems like the more you give. Amen. And uh, so just get your tithes, get your offerings. Remember that when you give. You're not giving just, the Bible says not to give out of necessity or begrudgingly. He says just be a cheerful giver. And you, you'll cheerfully give to your children. How many how many's got kids that loves Christmas more than they do when you get to see them open that package? You know why? It brings joy to you. And when you give, it'll bring joy to, you, to God. Amen. So let's pray tonight. Father, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for the men and women who have come to worship your name, Lord. We thank you for those who are faithfully giving and tithing and giving in their offerings to you, Father God, and for the building of your kingdom. God, take those and multiply for the use of your kingdom that people will be saved, sanctified, healed, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost, set free, God. And we're asking you, God, to bless the gift and the giver tonight as they bring their tithes and bring their offerings unto your storehouse, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Yeah. 
voices help me hear you say, you Come on, let's give him a good hand clap tonight. Somebody say hallelujah with me. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Our very own brother Charlie Mills, youth pastor, has come to make an announcement for me tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, God's up to something in here. I'm going to get the kids out of here and you all have church. We're going to do the same. Uh, 3 to 11. Going with Miss Whitney tonight, and then uh, we'll take uh, we'll take the rest of them. Twelve to nineteen, we'll take the rest of them. All right, let's give our young people a good hand as they're being dismissed. Amen. How many enjoyed the worship tonight? Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's see what we got here. Amen. 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 All right, reach down, pick up your Bible, turn with me to the Book of Ezra, chapter nine. Got to get my stuff here. Here we go. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's uh, also tonight remember uh, our young adults, our millennials are all over to White Pine tonight. They all went over there. Brother Brian's ministering over there tonight, helping them. Please be praying for Brother uh, or Pastor uh, Larry Frazier. Amen. Talked to him uh, about a week or so ago. He's still healing up, still needs our prayers. Amen. And, uh, all the urgent needs, the urgent needs that are tonight, amen. Please, please pray for Brother Clint, uh, Sister Helen Welch, amen. I did get uh, some good news. Uh, Brother Ronnie Hodge, we've been praying for him. I think he may get to come home tomorrow, amen. So I'm to give the Lord a good hand clap for that. Also, uh, remember Sister Judy Green, uh, uh, Brother Johnny went on to be with the Lord last night, amen. And just a great little old couple. We love them to death. And uh, so saddened by his passing from this life to the next. But I know that man, and I know his testimony, and I know where he's at right now. Amen. Ezra chapter 9, if you're there, say amen. Also pray for our country. Amen. I don't know if you can believe anything here anymore. <laughs> just be ready for anything. Amen. I heard uh, today I had... Uh, a, law, uh, a law enforcement officer called me. He said he had some friends in the military. He said they didn't, couldn't say something huge was fixing to happen. And I would say they're getting ready for the civil unrest either way it goes, right? It's just not a good time in our country, but I believe the Lord's in control, amen? And I believe God's going to do something for the Christian people, don't you? I'll tell you what, he don't play favorites, but he's on our side, amen? If he loves the Jews through all these thousands of years of not even not, and rejecting his covenant and everything, amen, and he still loves them, I'm telling you, and he's never forsook them, he's not going to forsake us either. How many believe that? I, I, tell you what, I tell you what might get some of this crowd in trouble, amen. He said, now watch this. This is what's going to get some folk in trouble. He said, I'm going to bless them and bless you, talking about the Jews, and I'm going to curse them and curse you. And we got a lot of officials, and I don't care which side you stand on. Democrats and Republicans do the same thing, amen. Hey, listen, it's a right wing and left wing, but they own the same bird. Somebody say amen. Bunch of crooks. That's what they are, amen. But the Lord's going to bless them, amen, that, that blessed Israel, amen, and he's going to curse them. And don't, they're, they're fixing to figure that out, amen. Ezra 9 and 9, if you're there, say amen. All right, just one little verse. Promise not to preach no more than two hours or maybe 30 if I can get out of it. 
or maybe 15 minutes. We never know. Amen. For we, for we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage. Did you read that? Is that what your Bible said? For we were bondmen, and while we were in bondage, God didn't forsake us. I, I want to preach on that in a minute, but I want that to settle on you just for a second. But hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the king of Persia to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our God and to repair the desolation thereof and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Let's pray. Father, so thankful tonight for all you've done, your blessings, your grace, God. Lord, truly, you've shed your grace upon this country. And God, we don't know what we're about to face, but you already know. God, you've already made provisions. You already know ahead of time, Lord, and you've provided all these years. And we just trust you, Lord, tonight and ask you to continue to bless Mount Vale, bless each request. God, you know the heart's cry. God, I just pray a special blessing right there where Clint's at and right there where little Helen's at. Move mightily on these requests. God, we commit them into your hands and we ask your blessings on the preached word of God. And everybody said, you might be seated in the presence of a living God that can change us. Amen. As I began to study the text, amen, and I began to look at this text, amen, I always keep an account of when I use these scriptures, and I wrestle with God if I have to reuse them uh, uh, within, uh, I, I don't like to reuse the scripture no more than I, than two or three years, amen, it's been, it's been 366 days since I used that scripture right there, and I've been in a wrestling match, I wanted to go back to the teaching tonight, but here's the way the Lord led me to come tonight, and I think it might be for the days to come, amen, for the things that we're probably about to face that we don't know about, Amen. I want you to understand something, amen, that we, uh, uh, whatever happens, keep your faith and trust in the Lord. Amen. It said, for we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in bondage. And as I begin to read that and begin to think about that, you think about this all the time, amen, that we were out there and we were in a mess. I don't know if you've ever been in a mess, but I'm telling you right now, I was the king of messes before I uh, gave my heart to Christ, amen? And we were in a mess. We were in bondage. I was bound. I just hunted stuff to be bound by. I don't know about you, but I gave myself over to everything coming and going almost, amen? If it looked good, man, I thought I could have a good time doing it. I was out there doing it, and I didn't care where, where, where I ended up at, amen? Didn't have an idea, amen, about where I was going, amen? I kind of figured I wasn't going to make it as bad as I was. But while I was in bondage, while I was a bond man, amen? I'm not a bond man anymore, and you're not either if you're in Christ, amen? But while I was a bond man, or, or if you will, or a bond woman, if you're a woman tonight, amen, uh, it said, God hath not forsaken us. And I began to think, and the New Testament reference to that scripture is, amen, Romans 5 and 8. It said that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, amen. It said, but God commendeth his love toward us while we were yet sinners, amen. And sometimes in life, amen, and especially as a pastor, I have to look at people and make an assessment in their life, amen. This is not who they're going to be. They're not where I want them to be, but they're not who I, or they're not going, they're not where they're going to be, amen. We're really playing, praying and believing that Brother uh, uh, Leonard's going to be saved one day. He confesses every time he gets up here that he's not saved. So we're really going to believe that one day he will be. How many going to believe with me tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's coming, Sister Tina. We're believing with you. Amen. Amen. But it's extended mercy unto, unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia. And, and what the scripture is saying to us tonight is that while me and you, amen, we were not worthy, but we've been made worthy. While me and you were out there doing all those things that we knew in our hearts and our minds was contrary unto God, amen, the mercy of God still followed us around. How many can just concur with me, amen, that God has had mercy on us in the midst of trials and tests, amen, and while we were in the world doing the crazy stuff, amen. I know some of you were so holy that God just had to save you, but most of us are really, really honest about things and we were wretched and lost and and undone without God or son, amen? And he said to give us a reviving, amen? What that says to me is, is to get a reviving, amen? Meaning that there, the spirit has been there and he sent his spirit back, amen? I don't know about you, but I believe God's about to send his spirit back into the house of God, amen? We went through some years, children of God, amen, that we just plugged along and we'd get a little goose bump here and a little move there. Somebody'd finally be saved, amen? We was praying and beating our head against the wall, 
And we were asking God, God, what's wrong? And what's going on? And why are you not moving? Amen. But I want you to believe with me tonight, amen, that God is about to out, uh, bring an outpouring, amen, to the house of God. I heard a man say this today, amen. He don't know anything about America. He's not even from America. He's supposed to be a renowned prophet. I won't tell you who he is, so I'll figure out if he's for real or not. But one thing he said that intrigued me was this. He said, God said this next move of his spirit that's coming into America and into the church, he said, God said he wasn't sending his spirit to them that lock the doors and run and hid. Amen. He said, God wasn't sending his spirit to those that were operating in a spirit of fear. He said, but God said he was going to send his spirit to them that would open the doors of his house and say, whosoever will, let him come. I come to tell somebody, amen, I can't help what they do. I heard a hundred days shut down. I may spend 90 days of that in the county tank over there but we'll start a revival over on E Block send me some money on the commissary amen I won't willingly shut it down they may pay, they may take me out of here and lock me up till it's over and if you're scared stay home amen but I want you to understand with me, God is looking for somebody, amen. He's followed us around all of our life, amen, and took care of us through our crazy years. And I want you to understand, and I had them and you had them. We did things, amen, that was contrary to God, that we knew in our heart and our minds, amen, wasn't right, but we did it anyway, and God's mercy followed us every day of our life. We, I've laid my head on the pillow many a night and cried out to God and said, oh God, have mercy on me. I, I, I thought I was once in grace, I was taught that, but I knew in my heart that I was going to hell in a handbasket. I knew I was headed toward a devil's hell a hundred mile in the air, and I'd cry out at night. And I didn't even know then if God heard me or not. And I've heard people say, oh, God, don't hear sinner man's cry. I come to tell you, if he don't hear a sinner man, ain't nobody saved. But I want you to understand, he heard this poor man's cry, and he saved me, and he delivered you, and he delivered you. He has been with with us when we was good and he has been with us when we weren't so good. Somebody give him praise. Amen. Now Ezra was writing about the rebuilding of the house of the Lord and I think that we're in a reset in our country. I think we're in a reset in the church. I, I've got a, a dear friend of mine and I won't even say where and it's not too far off from here and he passed away and and I, I and I got I had the great privilege and honor to get to preach in his church twice before he passed away, and it's not of our denomination, but he was a wonderful man of God, and he wrote a little he wrote a little bitty Honda 250 Rebel, and, and I thought he was crazy, you know what I'm saying? I really did. I, I'd be down in Knoxville, and I'd run into him. I kept running into him in the hospitals and stuff, and he was the soul winningest man I ever saw in my life. He invited me to come to his church, Amen, and I come and give it everything I had to bring everybody in that place into the presence of a living God, amen, and years went on, amen, he and I would grow closer and closer, and finally, uh, finally the Lord took him home, and I was thinking tonight as I passed his church on the way to this church, if that man of God was still alive today, they wouldn't have on that sign up there where to tune in at and watch us on Facebook, he'd have thrown the doors wide open, and he'd have cried with a loud voice, Jesus Christ still saves sinners, somebody ought to give God a little praise right there. It's time for a reviving. It's time to get some backbone behind us. Amen. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. I feel the Holy Ghost. He said he's not given us a spirit of fear but of power. That word power means dunamis. It's almost like dynamite. But it's on the inside and it's explosive power. It's just like you don't know when it's going to come on you power. Amen. And for God hath not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and of a sound mind. And I want you to understand with me tonight, amen, that I don't want to take any chance on anybody's health and if you don't feel good and, you ain't, and, and you're unsure, I want you to stay to the house. I'm not, I'm not batching anybody. If you feel like you need to wear a mask, that's wonderful. I want you to do that. I want you to do everything you can to protect your family. I'm not trying to belittle anybody in any way, but I want you to understand as for me in my house, amen, I'm going to come on, amen. I've got to, amen. The Lord put me in the head right here and I can't cower down now and run back and say, oh God, I don't know what you're going to do. I know what he's going to do. When we come together, he said we're two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. What do you mean, preacher? I said, God is looking for somebody that'll come and believe and say, I know that my Redeemer lives. 
I got to get to my message. Y'all quit now. Y'all don't mess me up. I lost my message. I got to get back to it. I teach against what I'm preaching right now. You don't run rabbits. But I've been running them, praise the Lord. Amen. Walk with me just for a moment through the Old Testament to the destroyed city of Jerusalem because of sin. Babylon came in with devastating destruction. The walls were broke down. The gates were charred and broken. The temple, the dwelling place of God, was nothing more than a rubble and no longer the proud city of David. No gold, no temple, no altar. All this is the after effect of sin. I want you to understand with me tonight, amen, that you and I know that with Christ in us, the hope of glory, we can't live in sin. It's not that we've lost the ability to sin, but we should have lost the desire for sin. And sin will absolutely still do what it would always do. It'll damn your soul to hell. The wages of sin is still death. If we continue in sin, amen, the Bible said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live therein any longer? It's time for the church. I believe God's sending the church a message. And it's time in this reset, in this rebuild. It's time for us to lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and run with patience the race that is set before us. How is the world ever going to want what we got if we act like them, look like them, dress like them, talk like them, drink like them? I want you to understand God is coming back after a church that hath made a bride, the Bible said, that hath made herself ready. Anybody ready tonight? It's time that the church of the living God get ready. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 34 said, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. Hey Amen. And, and I'm not talking to people that's struggling. And can I just tell you this? And I, I said this just the other day to some folk. There were things in my life when I first got saved that I would allow that I'd never allow now. How many understand it's a process and we're growing? The Bible said to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Savior, amen. And I want you to understand as faith begins to grow in you, God will move on you and God will give you power that you never thought about having. I remember a guy that came here years and years ago, amen, under the other pastor and he was a good man. I loved him to death. And I knew, he, I knew he knew the Bible, and I knew he could sing, and I knew he could play, and I knew he wouldn't do nothing. He'd go with me on visitation, and one, one night we was on visitation, and he got in a car, and he had a glow about him, and he said, listen, he said, I'll not tell you this. He said, but now I'm ready. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to sing. I'm ready to teach. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he said, I just got sanctified. He said, I prayed through the other night, and he said, God touched me. And he said, I want you to know I thought for years, and you, all my life he said I've been smoking dope since the 60's and I never thought I could ever give it up and he said I want you to know on my knees in an old fashioned altar he said as I cried out to God he said God came in and touched me and took the very desire you know what I hear this all the time amen people say and I used to get so mad but I'm on your side now they said I was born like this and I said yes and amen me too I want you to understand we were all born into sin amen but that's why the Bible said that we must be born again. Help me somebody that's saved. Help me somebody that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Somebody ought to testify and say, I'm one of them. I've been freed by the blood tonight. I ain't supposed to get like this on Wednesday night. Y'all stop, help me. Amen. Woo. Oh, we're living in perilous times right now. Sin is abounding. I heard we're going to have to reprogram our children. Did you hear that one? <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, if you, it, it, we're coming to a place that sin is abounding. And if you're against sin, hey, there was 57 people in one cabinet stood up the other day and said they wanted to do away with Christianity as we know it in, in, in America. They didn't want to bother the Catholics. And I'm not against the Catholics. Help the Catholics, Lord, help the Baptists, help everybody. They didn't, but but our, our style, amen, of Christianity, amen, our, our, our style of evangelicals, they didn't like us anymore, amen. And all, this, all these years, all they wanted us to do is, you shouldn't hate people, and you're a hater, and you're a racist, and, 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 and you ought to be more tolerant. And they fought so hard to be tolerated, and now they've became so intolerable. I want you to understand, there's a day of reckoning coming for those people, amen. And I come by 
God to tell you, I don't care what laws they change, right's still right and wrong's still wrong. And I want you to understand that righteousness will exalt a nation, amen? And I believe that God is about to send righteousness back into the church. He's calling to the body of Christ and he's saying, come out from among the world and be separated. He's calling to me and you and he's saying, don't look at that. Don't go there. Don't drink that. Don't smoke that. Don't say that. Somebody help me. Amen. The worship of Molech was alive and well in our society as we sacrifice millions of unborn babies to a God of convenience. Bill Clinton said that abortions should be rare, few, and for medical reasonings that might save the mother's life. And now they say if it's born and survives the abortion, we kill it on the table. That, that's what they're trying to say, amen. And I want you to understand every time that God ever made a, a, a great move of God came, that God was about to bring redemption to the body of Christ or to his people, amen. Amen. They were killing the babies in the day of Moses. Why was Moses in the bulrushes? I come by to tell you the devil was trying to kill righteous seed, amen. Little Moses was floating in amongst all them snakes and gators and everything else and haters come on somebody and God raised up a man amen and led his people out I come to tell you amen when Christ our Savior was born the reason that Mary and Joseph flee into Israel into Egypt amen the reason they left amen was because they were killing all the babies I want you to understand with me tonight that God sees every baby that's been murdered he sees every low life that stands up and says it's all right. Some people, amen, God is about to show you whose side he's really on. I want you to know he's always on the side of the afflicted. God is about to speak in this country. Listen for the voice of God. Amen. Many of our politicians have praised Sodom and endorsed homosexuality and taken away our rights to teach our, to teach our children Christian values. I believe that we have been raised up in this time to rebuild the house of the Lord. Can I, can I just say this? I won't be mean. But we had our days of legalism, did we not? I, I didn't, I, honest, it felt so good to have security, to just believe that Jesus loved me and I was going to get to go to heaven. I told you this before, but I was at Walmart just right after I became the pastor and I invited this lady to church and she looked at me and she was all interested. And I was talking to her about the Lord and what he was doing, how he was moving. And I told her it was church of God and she's... She said, them's mean people, and I don't want to go to church with hateful people like that. I said, come on down, honey. I'm pastoring out and changed all the rules. I said, all the mean people's gone. <laughs> she didn't come, but. <laughs> but you know something? We've had our bouts with legalism, and I've not got no axe to grind. Hey, amen. Everybody in, everybody in the old church wasn't legal. Hey, amen. Some of them were. There's a handful everywhere you went. Amen. And they, and, they, and they had a saying, amen, you look better going than you do coming. I said, not to this old boy. I said, I don't care how wretched and lost they are. I don't care what they done last night. I don't care what they did 15 minutes before they got here. I said, when they come to the house of God, I said, we ought to love them, amen. I said, how in the world are they ever gonna hear the gospel? I said, they can't get righteous to come. I said, they gotta come and get righteous. And I said, the only way they can get righteous is if faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God and they give their heart and life to Christ. I said, then they'll be clothed in righteousness said they'll be all right amen amen and we need a revival in america and in the church but it'll never happen until the people of god come back to true worship and respect uh, for our lord and the savior there's not many ways to heaven there's one i'm close-minded and i'm gonna win amen and they can argue, and you know what? They, and they can argue and may even win the argument. They could win the argument. But I want you to understand, when Jesus comes back, they'll realize they was wrong in their loss. Amen. You can't get there putting your faith, hope, and trust in nobody, nothing, no other God. Amen. All gods are false gods, save one, and his name is Jesus, the one that died on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And until America turns back to the Lord, amen, we won't be a revival. But I want you to understand, I believe in the last day outpouring that Peter spoke about, amen, he said, this is that was prophesied by the prophet Joel in the last day saith God I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh Amen. sons and daughters prophesy it's time that you and I get out of the outhouse amen of sin amen it's time that you and I come out from among the world stand up and be accountable
before and say, I'm one of them. I'm a blood bought believer in Jesus Christ. And yes, I am saved tonight. Woo. Drunk again, children. My daddy said, and he was. We'd be riding down the road and he'd run out of the road. Mom would be hitting him on the arm, screaming and holler. He'd say, hold on, children, daddy's drunk again. He was too. Uh, but I, I'm on a different wine than daddy was, amen. <laughs> amen, the first thing church must do to get out of bondage and realize God has not forsaken us is our inner bondage. I, you know, you, you read everything, but I, I, I was reading something the other day and it was a, it's a real high, pro, high profile denomination in Christianity. And I, I won't say because I don't have, I'm not fact checking. Amen. We might have to put it on Facebook. They fact check a lot of stuff. Maybe they would know. Probably not, but they might know. Amen. They only fact check stuff they don't like, right? But, uh, but it, was, it was a very high profile. A lot of people go to this particular denomination. And they said the hierarchy is all Luciferian now. The hierarchy. But they, they know there's a God. They believe in God, but they worship the devil. I know you want to shout on that, but that's all right. And see, I want you to understand the Bible said certain men have crept in unaware. Jude said. Amen. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Amen. And denying our and denying the only Lord God. Amen. And it's time that the church, you know what? If 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 America is gonna be in turmoil, it deserves a church that's in revival. They need somewhere they can come and be saved. Amen. Listen, the, the rhetorics of religion will never help them. They'll come in and they'll go right back out just like they came. Amen. We used to sing when I was a little boy in the Baptist church, you don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus' name. I want you to understand with me, amen, there is power to change a life in Christ Jesus. Amen. I come by to tell the devil tonight trying to spread fear. Amen. If he can save me, he can feed me. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to understand if he can can save me and he can feed me he can keep my lights on if he can save me and feed me and keep my lights on he can keep me in a car to drive if he can save me amen keep my lights on feed me keep me something to drive he can keep me in some clothes to wear I want you to understand I'm his from the top of my head to the sole of my feet I belong to him and the devil can't do nothing about it oh, hallelujah to God Somebody praise him if you believe that's right. My God, he's here. He's here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's better felt than tell. My Lord, children, amen. Unless you understand that God is extending mercy right now. If he was who some people said he was, he done killed everybody in Washington. Would he not? Did you see that thing on Facebook? It said, wouldn't it be cool if Liars uh, Bridges did, really did catch on fire? They said, we got a problem over here. <laughs> so I'm not saying you're a liar, but your britches are smoking, dude. <laughs> Somebody check Leonard over there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Isaiah. 61, Isaiah 61, Jesus walks in, we were there last year, both Philip and I, and our wives, we were there, and uh, we were there where they believe, and I got some pictures of that little, it looks like an awning made out of, of a uh, rock, and, and it, and they, they uncovered a temple there and, and they believed that this was where that Jesus was. When the Bible said he stood up for it to read, he walked into the place and he walked in there on a specific day. They began out the new year in Genesis and they finish it up in Malachi. They don't receive the New Testament, but they read the Old Testament. They study the scrolls, amen. And Jesus walks into the temple on that day and the Bible said that he stood up for it to read. Amen. Our King James Version makes it, alludes to it almost like it's a book but it was really a scroll. Amen. And 
I saw that awning there, and I, it's all fenced in around. I couldn't get to it, amen. I wanted to get. I wanted. To, I wanted to go over and just lay down on top of it because it's where he stood. He stood up for it to read. He climbed up on that thing, and this is what he said. In Isaiah 61, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. I want you to understand with me, amen, when he stood up and made that declaration, amen, everything changed in the atmosphere. Now, uh, listen, I know the New Testament and the New Covenant was not in effect until the blood of Jesus was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. But I want you to understand there was something happened in the atmosphere when he stood up for to read and he went back. The Bible said he handed it back to the young man and he went down and he sat down in his seat and the Bible said, your Bible Bible said in the New Testament that all eyes was upon him. Everybody turned and looked and he said this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. I come by to tell you tonight that God is looking for somebody to pour out his spirit upon. God is looking for somebody to anoint to preach the gospel. We got too many amen, we got too many of Charlie Brown preachers running around giving lectures, fully on a lecture. Give me somebody that's anointed that I get up under the anointing of God and preach as the Holy Ghost falls. Hallelujah. Dead, dry religion ain't gonna make it through this next reset we're coming into. They ain't gonna pack them out to hear the little stories about a dog that got run over. They gonna need some anointing that don't break the yoke. It destroys the yoke, sweetheart. Amen. He said all eyes was upon him. The atmosphere began to change. At that moment, because see, the Spirit of the Lord was only given to a few people at different times and, and prophets of old, but at, Jesus was talking about a time that the Spirit of God would be released on all of us. Amen. God's plan for your life was not to be bound, but to be set free. Isaiah 10 27 said, It shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. And his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Do you know why that we have nominal churches? Let's leave everybody else alone. Let's talk about Church of God. I had a man call me today. I had a man call me this day, and this is what he said to me. He said, quite possibly. He said, I don't know how y'all do it up here, but he said, quite possibly, Mount Vale Church of God is absolutely the biggest church in East Tennessee. I said, surely not, brother. I said, these churches of God from here all the way to Kentucky, all the way to the Carolinas, everywhere. He said, let me tell you something. He said, a lot of them are there, and there ain't no move of God in the churches anymore. He said, and you're one of the few that God keeps moving in over and over and over. He said, people coming. He said, we got churches people ain't been saved in in years. I said, fine fire the pastor, amen, and start a prayer group and fast and pray until you get a man of God or a woman of God that'll lead you into the presence of God and, and find the fullness of his spirit. It's time, amen, God is sick of ritualism. He's sick of dead church, amen, and he ain't no sicker of it than I am. I can't take dead church, amen. I don't want nothing to do with it. I just, soon, I don't blame people for not having church on Sunday night. I couldn't endure two services dead is at four o'clock in a row. Can you? Amen. Amen. I'm almost done, almost. John 8, 32, 32 said, and you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. Come on, friend. We have enough anointing in this place to raise the dead. We do. Because the truth is being preached. And you know what? And this, can I... Uh, uh, I don't want to be negative, but can I? I can't understand something. How some people can grow and thrive, and some people die on the vine. Right in the middle of God moving and God revealing Himself and God healing and setting the captive free and, 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 and God sanctifying and baptizing, and some people just drop on the vine and die. Well, they always sing that old song, and I don't like it. Well, okay. You know, I mean, I, I didn't know that we got to choose what songs. I thought that we let, waited on them to be led of the Lord to sing, and we was going to worship the Lord anyway. Amen? I don't like the way the preacher hollers. I can't help it. I try not to. If you felt what I felt, honey, you'd be hollering too. Amen? 
Jerry's hollering while I go. He come on. I stand right there on that door, and it was dark. He opened that door. He called me God right there. <laughs> Turned white as his hair. <laughs> to give us a revival. I'm mean. Pray, pray for me. I am mean. Uh, it, it's time for the children of God to be revived again. There's limitless power for the believer. But we want to ascribe it all to the pastor and the deacon board and the assistant pastor and the Sunday school teacher. But there's limitless power for the believer in Christ. Amen. It's time for you to be revived. It's time for you to lay hands on the sick. It's time for you to preach a word in season. It's time for you to be a counselor. It's time for you, amen, to be a light in a dark world. Amen. We become, we become complacent. Amen. It's time to stir up the gift that's within us. Amen. Ezra 3, 1 and 2. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem, then stood up. Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and the brethren and the priests of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel. And his brethren builded the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offerings their own as it is written in the law of Moses to man. Any religious movement, if it is of God, will be centered around an altar. Amen. The altar is a place of death and a place where sin must be dealt with. Amen. The fact remains, any movement that does not require the cleansing of sin is not redemptive. I'm going to say it again. Any movement that does not require you to come out from among the world, be redeemed, amen, be washed in the blood to make you a new creature, amen, is, is a false religion. That's what kills me about religion today, amen. That's why I am so I am so sick, amen, of turning on televisions, amen, and, and um, we sat there, me and my wife here a while back, and I'm listening to this old boy, and, and, and I'll give you a little hint, and I ain't gonna tell you this, praise the Lord, child of God, and uh, he, uh, uh, he, and he looks like Richard Washing, and he's up there, and he's talking about all these blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings. I said, how much it gonna cost me? And he kept on talking, and it's blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings, nothing about the blood, nothing about you must be born again, nothing about being baptized in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, nothing about sanctification, just blessings and blessings. I said, how much is that? I gotta know. I wanna know how much it is. And finally, he pulled up. It was $39.99. And you can be blessed to the Lord. I said, hogwash. Turn the false prophet off. It's time, amen, that the preacher stood up and preached Jesus Christ and him still crucified. It's time that a preacher, men and women of God, get under the unction of the Holy Ghost and call sin, sin. Amen. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said when Christ calls a man he bids him to come and die we must rebuild the altars in, in our churches and especially at Mount Hale amen my prayer is for every man in his place to strip himself of pride and carnality and build an altar in his home where sin is dealt with and God is called upon Every demon in hell will tremble when men and women of God will rebuild the altar. First Kings 18 and 30 said, And Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And when the whole country of Israel was backslid away from God, the prophet of God, the first thing he did was he rebuilt the altar. Can, 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 can I tell you something? I wish I knew, I don't know what was about to happen. It's probably as good I don't because I'd probably tell everybody. You know. But can I tell you this one thing I do know is going to happen? God is trying to prepare us for the harvest. I talk to pastors every day. Some of them, Church of God, some of them, a lot of them ain't. This, I tell every one of them the same thing. Be ready for this next move of God. Prepare your people for the influx of people that don't look like them. Be ready when the Lord sends them. Be prepared. I said God will not give you more than you can handle and he will not send you more than you're prepared for. I said why would he send them 
if you don't have a word. I said, why would he send them if your people are mean and hateful and won't shake their hands? I said, why would he send them if you don't have a Sunday school class? I told one of them, I said, have you got a youth department? He said, I ain't got no kids. I said, that ain't no excuse. Start a youth department. I said, by faith, I said, believe God that he in your community is gonna send the young people. I said, hire you a youth pastor and get ready. I ain't never heard nothing like that. I said, get ready. I said, God is about to do something. If you're not ready, he He's going to pass you by. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready. That's why God is calling Mount Vale back to the altars, back to holiness, back to righteousness. He's calling us. He's trying to get us ready for this next move of his spirit. Amen. You know what Elijah said, though? He didn't say that to God that gives good lectures. Let him answer us. He didn't say the God that was a great orator or the God that didn't care where you lived in sin or not. He said, let the God that answers by fire. You know what's coming? Fire's coming back in the altars. We felt it tonight when we was in these altars and praying. Is a fire in this house before you ever got here, amen. While you're still in the shower, some of us in here praying over these doors and the fire of God fell right here in the house. And I want you to understand, amen, our God is a consuming fire. He's a jealous God, amen, and he won't share his glory with nobody else, amen, and he don't want you going after any other gods, but if you want him, he's a God of fire, amen. Can I tell you this? Fire will always purge, and fire burns out the dross, amen. It don't take me all day long, amen, when I get into fire to get away from. I, have you ever reached in and we had a fireplace at the house and I reached in, amen, and I opened the door and I reached it too far in and got my hand in there and I, it didn't take me all day to feel the heat and back up from it, amen. Why? It was about to start consuming my hand and I want you to understand the fire of God is about to fall and it's gonna fall on whosoever will let him come. It's gonna fall on them that are hungry, amen. It's gonna fall on them that love him. It's gonna fall on them that ain't shut their doors, amen, to the government mandates it's probably gonna come. It's gonna fall fall on them that will stand strong in a dark hour. It's going to fall on them that love God. It's going to fall on them that love people. It's going to fall on them that have kept his word. It's going to fall on them, amen, that covet and earnestly look for his coming. It's going to fall on them, amen, that look for him, amen, coming the second time without sin unto salvation. He's coming, and he's coming in great power and glory. Somebody give him praise. Amen. I got to move. Verse four, uh, what time is it? 8.22, I got eight minutes. And then y'all turn me off about 8.30. I feel the switches kicking. It said, they kept also the feast of the tabernacle as is written and offered, the daily burnt offerings by number according to the custom as the duty of every day required. They reinstituted true worship. Three things necessary, ingredients to true worship, sacrifice, celebration, and consecration. We have taught people well that worship is celebration, but we've not given them an equal time to teach that worship is sacrifice and consecration. So much of what passes as praise and worship is only praise. Those who went and returned to Jerusalem went back to sacrifices, humbling themselves before the Lord, offering themselves in consecration. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I praise him for shoes on my feet, food on my table, clothes on my back, but I worship him tonight because he is the king of all kings and he is the Lord of all glory. John chapter four, and I'm about done, they'll come to the music. But the hour cometh and now he is. On true worshipers. Jesus just taught. This little woman had five husbands and living with another man. We're so quick to count people out. Leave them alone. You are not God's police officers. Let God deal with them. They can't get no help if they leave. Amen. And, and look, my original text, let me back all the way down here to it. For we were bondmen. This little woman was a bondman. Leave that scripture on the board for me. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage. Now we find Jesus going and sitting at a well in the hot part of the day, waiting on a little woman to come. 
had five husbands. One, two, three, four, five. You know what five is the number of? Grace. I'm not suggesting you run off and get a uh, divorce. I'm just saying that grace met her at that place. Amen. He said, but the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Second Samuel 24, 24. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. That's what David said. Watch this as you're standing. Genesis 22 and 5. And Abraham said unto the young man, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go, I and the lad will go yonder and worship. He got a word from God to take that boy up on the mountain and kill him. And you know, he was speaking life even then. And Abraham understood that worship cost you something. There's a place of sacrifice. I love to praise the Lord. Sometimes we've got to offer a sacrifice of praise. You know what we've given God? We've given him what's left so many times. This next reset that God's trying so hard to do, I'm believing that you won't be able to tell who's going through nothing because they're going to be worshiping God. Please please don't let your circ don't give God circumstantial worship. Abraham said, I and the lad will go yonder. He said, it's going to cost me something. But we're going to worship the Lord. And then me and him's going to come back to you. Matthew 26 and 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. And she poured it on his head as he sat at me. She came to worship him. And she said, I know it's going to cost me something. Children being serious we don't know it's a scary time I hear about this reset I want to do a world reset we need one not the kind they're trying to give us but I believe God's wanting to do a reset in the church and can I just tell you this? I've been your pastor. March will be 17 years I've been here. I think I can't remember now. It's been so long. But all them years, I came when my life was falling apart. I came when I, in 17 years, you can't believe the low places I had to walk to get here to preach to you. And I never told nobody. I came when I was on the highest mountains I've ever been in in my life. And I walked through the lowest valleys. And I couldn't tell nobody. Because the more I complained about it, the heavier the devil hit me. And you have to understand something. The devil can't read your mind. And if you don't react to the circumstances around you, it confuses the enemy. It just confuses the enemy. I called a man today. He's convinced. He's convinced. The Lord don't even love him. He's convinced. He's convinced the only way out of this world is going to kill himself. I said, you can't do that. I said, what are you? You can't do that? I can't. Nobody cares. I said, I called you. I said, I care. I don't believe it. I said, why did I call you then? praises of his people and to continue down this road we're on with the move of God that we have in this building we must learn how to give God praise sacrificially for this new reset because see I want you to understand I believe there are some dark times ahead of us I do believe that but I believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel God's going to be glorified in everything that happens 
And you can't give up on God because it got a little dark. You can't give up on God because somebody looked at you funny. We quit church and go to hell for everything. But I want you to understand this. Jesus said, the time is, the time is now that true worshipers will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I'm opening the altars tonight for those that will come and say, God, I want to be a true worshiper. God, I want to help rebuild the house of God and we'll start with praise and we'll start with worship and we'll start with consecration and we'll start with sacrifice. If that's you and you're willing, I want you to step out of your seat, come down and make you an altar or right where you're at or come to this altar and say, God, tonight, I want to be a true worshiper. I want to be a part of what you're doing in these last days making commitments and sacrifices to God that no matter what happens in my life I'm going to be found in the house of the Lord Father we love and bless the name of the Lord God tonight we're so thankful God for your word that's forever settled in the heavens thankful for the grace of God Lord thank you Lord that you followed me around when I was lost and undone without you and God you had mercy and you had grace and God you sent your spirit to revive me to bring me to life and God, I'm asking for that quickening spirit to come to the house of God and back into the church again. And God, that you would send the Holy Ghost, God, to us, Lord, as we make the sacrifices and we consecrate ourselves and we get the sin out of our lives and we worship you in spirit and in truth, that your glory would fall and the fire of God would come back. God, may we all, may we all rebuild the altars at our home and in our lives and in our hearts, God. And God, may we visit these altars and Lord, that we deal with sin and deal with things in our life, that we come to a place, God, that you are glorified in our lives again. God, be God in this church. God, we want the fire of God in this house. Lord, we want the power of God in this house. We want to be a part of this end time revival, Lord, that sees souls coming into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that came in in 2020, God, but we're looking for souls to come in 2021. God, help us ever be prepared. God, help us, Lord, that we don't wear our feelings on our face, God, and on our shoulders, that, that the devil can't tell that we come in and offer the sacrifices of praise to you in the house of God. Lord, that you might be glorified, that souls might be one to the kingdom of God. And God, we're believing, Lord, for a great end time revival and a great move of your spirit and a great move of your power. God, give us. They're calling for a reset, God. And Lord, their reset ain't gonna, ain't gonna be what we're looking for, but we're looking for a reset, God, for those that'll stand up and declare the word of God. For those that are hungry, Lord, you said, blessed are they that are hungry and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Fill us, God, we're hungry. Fill us, God, we love you. Fill us, God, we need you. We long for you as the heart panteth after the water brook. So thirst our soul after thee, O oh God. Fill this place with your glory. Fill this place with your glory. God, fill us as believers with hunger for more of you. Lord, the more we, of us we get out, the more we can get you in. God, help us, God, that to decrease, that you can increase in our life. God, we long for, we look for, hastening to the day of the coming to, for you, coming after the bride. But God, until that day comes, Lord, we need your spirit. We need your power. We hunger for your glory. Give us souls, Lord. Give us children, lest we die, God. Give us children in the kingdom of God. God will forever give you the praise and honor and glory for all you do, all you've done. In Jesus' name.
here, we can feel his presence the way we do. We need to really thank God for what we have here because it's not like this everywhere. It's not like this everywhere. We need to say thank you, God, for allowing us to feel your presence every time we come into the house of the Lord. You know, he's here always, but we bring him with us. We're the ones that's got to be prayed up and ready to accept whatever God has for us and to be able to function in the spirit of the Lord. Don't forget, we have a prayer tomorrow night at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7 and on Friday from 6 to 7. Don't forget that. Tell somebody. Ask them what they need prayer for. Bring it before the Lord. You know, God's doing some awesome things during this fast. And I can't wait to see what all he's going to do. Don't forget, we have Sunday school. Our service Sunday morning at 8.15. We have Sunday school at 9.30. We have morning worship at 10.30, Sunday night service at 6 o'clock. But don't forget, ladies, Tuesday night we have a special guest that's going to be bringing the devotion for us. So you need to tell somebody, bring a friend, bring a finger fan, and let's enjoy the presence of the Lord together as sisters. You know, we you come in as a guest, but you come once or twice in your family. Now, sisters, we need to get together. We need to celebrate the presence of the Lord together. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We worship you, God, for what we have felt here tonight, God, what you have said to us, Father God, the strength and the courage you have gave us to be able to hold out, God, until you come back and get us, Father God. We pray, God, that you will help us throughout the rest of this fast, God. And we pray, God, that you will bring us back at your point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.